The transition of the Galactic Republic to the Galactic Empire involved a number of drastic changes to the units and doctrines of the now Imperial Starfleet. Though the Navy initially continued to operate the Venator, Acclimator and Consular class starships used across the Clone Wars, they quickly began to introduce new vessels intended to better suit the goals and characteristics of the new Imperial Navy, as well as modernising older warships to supplement these new designs and to complement the strengths of the newer vessels. In the light-duty fighter support role, the Empire employs the Gazanti-class cruiser, an older design first introduced as a civilian freight hauler by the Karelian Engineering Corporation. The Gazanti fell into military use shortly after its introduction and served with numerous planetary militias, as well as the Confederacy of Independent Systems, during the Clone Wars. With the advent of the Galactic Empire, the cruiser was refitted to serve as a fleet escort ship and as a carrier vessel for small groups of TIE fighters held externally to the vessel's ventral hull. The Empire the Empire also developed an intelligence variant of the Gazanti, intended to serve as a listening ship, and vessels of the type featured extensive arrays of advanced communications and sensor systems to assist their cybernetically enhanced crew in gathering intelligence on potential insurgencies. Where the Gazanti class is best used to support a group of larger vessels, the substantially larger Raider class Corvette fills a far more aggressive role. The Raider is the Empire's definitive anti-fighter Corvette and fast attack vessel, sporting a powerful arsenal of heavy laser turrets and ion cannons, as well as multiple turbo lasers and missile hardpoints for engaging larger ships. The vessel is most often deployed to support wings of strike craft, and is most effective when used in conjunction with the Empire's most advanced starfighters such as the TIE Advanced and TIE Defender. Of the smaller warships introduced in the earliest days of the Empire, the Raider-class Corvette is easily the most successful, becoming extremely popular with Imperial naval officials as an effective tactical asset for small-scale engagements. The ship's career continued long past the Battle of Yavin, and the vessel was even employed as a deployment craft for elite Imperial Spec Ops units, such as Inferno Squadron. Perhaps the Empire's most noticeable holdover from the Clone Wars, the Architense class light cruiser was a relatively new model in the final years of the Republic, designed to be deployed alongside Venator and Consular class starships in battle with the CIS. As part of the Empire's fleet modernization program, the Architense received a small refit, adding several docking couplers to the ship's bow to facilitate the transportation of small fighter squadrons or individual shuttlecraft. The warship boasts numerous quad laser arrays, as well as anti-capital turbo lasers and concussion missile launchers, allowing the vessel to fill a mid-range role in an Imperial battle group and be deployed independently as a crisis response or force projection vessel. The Architense was a famously versatile starship, and as such it became a fairly common sight across the Empire, often seen serving as a communications vessel, sector patrol ship or escort cruiser. In its earliest years, the Imperial Navy's range of specialist vessels was far smaller than it would eventually become, and under most circumstances only two classes of starship were employed exclusively in the support role. First of these is the Quasar Fire Class Cruiser Carrier, a light starfighter carrier most often used to enforce security within the gravity wells of occupied planets. The vessel is lightly armed and armoured, and is generally escorted by light cruisers or corvettes when deployed to hostile areas, but so long as its safety is assured, the ship is able to provide a powerful advantage to any Imperial flotilla, sortying large numbers of TIE fighters and assault craft, and providing extensive maintenance and refueling facilities for Imperial starfighters. The second and perhaps most renowned of the early Empire's specialist warships is the Interdictor class cruiser, a vessel designed specifically to force hostile starships to decelerate from hyperspace through the use of shipboard gravity well generators. The advantage of such a vessel against hostile insurgents, who typically favour hit and fade tactics, cannot be overstated, as it allows the Empire to eliminate valuable rebel starships which might otherwise have escaped the field of battle. Much like the Quasar Fire, however, the Interdictor lacks substantial armament or defences, and as such requires near-constant escort. Of the few entirely new starship designs developed to serve in the Emperor's modernised fleet, none would become more symbolic of the Empire's strength than the Imperial One-class Star Destroyer, the cornerstone of the Imperial Navy. The Imperial class is the definitive spacefaring warship, armed to the teeth with dozens of turbo laser, ion cannon and point defence emplacements, whilst carrying a large complement of strike craft, ground assault vehicles and infantry. The massive destroyers were stark and imposing, capable of subjugating small 
territories through intimidation alone, and as the mainstay capital ship of the Imperial Navy, they were the means by which the Emperor maintained his grip on the galaxy, ensuring complete security and Imperial dominance in whichever system they were stationed. Though the Imperial Navy would ultimately become far more nuanced and complex, with starship classes to suit nearly any encounter, the core group of designs which made up the Imperial fleet in its earliest years established the standard upon which the Navy would build, and even following the development of the Imperial II class Star Destroyer and the Goliath Executor class Star Dreadnought, many of these older designs would continue to serve the Empire reliably.